Well done. You've completed the international ESOL. I'll, I'll take that from the top. Sorry. Cool. Well done. You've successfully completed the Sitting Guild's International ESOL workshop with the module focusing on writing skills. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the workshop and found it informative, interesting and even fun. If you did, then don't forget that that's also what should happen for your learners. Most of my teaching colleagues would agree that writing is not fun. It's not seen as the most interesting activity in the classroom by learners or by teachers. But what you did in the course of the workshop was actually carry out some of the tasks that your learners will find in the ESOL test. You filled in a form, you wrote narratives, you corrected errors. These are all useful things that learners do and they're all examples of how you can take your teaching into the classroom. Now I'm sure you've got your own ideas about how best to teach writing and don't forget you've got many sample papers and teaching and learning support materials for the City Guilds test. I'd like to focus on one particular aspect of writing and give one or two tips for teachers and for learners. It's the question of errors. I think the first thing to say is that we mustn't be frightened of mistakes and errors. They do exist. People make mistakes, a slip of the pen, for any number of reasons, and errors, we think it's right and it's not, can become ingrained. Now, accuracy is not the only important thing in writing. Communicating the message, as we saw in the workshop, is very important. Organising text, organising text so it's easy for the target reader, that's important. Um, range of language. The more we write narratives, as you did, the more we write descriptive text, the wider range we naturally need to use. But accuracy does form a part. I know that many teachers use a correction code. And one of the things that we tried to focus on in the workshop was getting rid of the idea of just a correction code and using what we called an improvement code. Now, an improvement code is the same thing by another name, except that what it does is focus not on what's wrong, but on what can be made even better. And looking at implementing the improvement code in your classroom, it doesn't always have to be the teacher who applies it. One nice technique is to use the proofreader, the sub-editor. Learners write a text, a colleague, a peer, can look at it and suggest ways where it could be improved. Not correcting it, not with the red pen, um, but can involve the teacher and say, am I right? Could this make it better? It doesn't have to be just mistakes. It could be using a wider range. It could be suggesting paragraphs. Um, if we look back to the workshop, and that's one of the great things about the online workshops, they're there as a permanent record. You don't just attend, take notes and it's gone. If we look back, we'll see that the improvement code can focus on specific detail which is appropriate to specific level. Um, one other thing I think to say about writing is that more than anything else, it shows the difference between extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. I hope you were motivated, I'm sure you were, to do the workshop, and I hope that as you went through the workshop, you found the motivation increasing. Extrinsic motivation is whatever you bring to the process, whatever your learners bring through that door into your classroom. We don't have much control over that in the short term, but intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation means giving our learners a reason to do things, giving them encouragement, whatever we can create in the learning environment. And as we saw in the workshop, if you fill in a form with accurate detail, you may get a desired result. If you write a story, if you write um, a description, you may get the required response from your reader. He or she may laugh or cry, um, may find it touching, moving, fascinating. The more we can get our learners to do what we've just done in that workshop, the more we'll help them to prepare in the test. And before I finish, we must of course remember that it is a test, so people are learning to improve their writing, but they are learning to do it in a very specific way. So don't forget some of the things we've looked at. Word limit is important. Content is important. Get learners to read and check these things. It's easy to do. 
get learners to enjoy writing. An another activity a friend of mine was showing me the other day was showing a TV programme and stopping it before uh, the last five minutes and getting the learners to write the scenario for the end. It makes it fun, it integrates the skills and it takes writing away from just being um, a rather lonely, negative task. So if you enjoy the tasks on the workshop, which I hope you did, your learners will enjoy them when you take them into your classroom. That's all from me on writing. Thank you very much.